أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده رسوله عليه الصلاة والسلام أما بعد after praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى and testifying that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala and after testifying that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his last messenger may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send peace and blessings upon him today's reminder is about hadith reported in Sahih al-Imam Muslim and in Watta al-Imam Malik narrated by Suhail ibn Abi Salih from his father Abi Salih from uh, Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu from Rasulullah alayhi salatu was salam in this reminder or in this hadith uh, our Prophet alayhi salatu was salam said inna allaha yarda lakum thalathan wa yakrahu lakum thalathan he said alayhi salatu was salam what it means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, pleased about three things and he hates three things for you. The three things that uh, please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said that, أَن تَعْبُدُوهُ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَأَن تَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا وَأَن تُنَاصِحُوا مَنْ وَاللَّهُ اللَّهُ أَمْرَكُمْ So these three things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased about, number one, to worship him and not to associate partner with him. And this one is known for all of us because it is the purpose of existence, the reason for, for creation, the wisdom behind the creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah Azza wa Jal said that he did not create uh, uh, jinn kind and mankind except to be worshipped, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah An-Nisa, وَعَبُدُوا اللَّهِ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِي شَيْئًا and worship Allah and do not associate partners with him. But what is the definition of the worship? Al-ibadah yasmun jami' li kulli ma yuhibbu Allah wa yardah min al-aqwal wal-a'mal al-zahira wal-batina hiya kamal al-hubb ma'a tamam al-zul So the definition of word ibadah is the word ibadah is a comprehensive name to everything Allah loves from our actions the actions of the tongue, the actions of the heart, the actions, uh, the physical actions. So everything Allah loves is ibadah. If you do it to uh, please him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything Allah loves is ibadah. The complete submission to Allah Azza wa Jal, the, uh, to be obedient, uh, to be submissive, uh, uh, and to, uh, to, to the complete love to Allah Azza wa Jal, and uh, complete humiliation as uh, slaves and servants to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, how we know what Allah loves? If ibadah is to uh, do what Allah loves, all the actions that Allah loves subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how we know what Allah loves? We know what Allah loves from the Quran and the Sunnah. So if we implement what Allah loves, that uh, the things that he mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah, and we do it sincerely for his sake to please him, he will be pleased with it, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the servant of Allah can uh, uh, spend and invest his entire uh, time, the 24-7, the, the uh, in, in actions of worship. When he wakes up in the morning with intention to refrain from everything haram, it's an action of worship to refrain from everything haram. And to start your day by the prayers and the recitation of the morning remembrance. And even when you go to work with intention to do a halal job that benefit, uh, benefits others and to make money to fulfill your financial obligations, to pay your zakah and to fulfill the need of your family, your work itself is considered an action of worship. The way you treat your neighbors, 
the way you treat your family members, having a good kinship relations, uh, the way you treat the Muslims and non-Muslims around you, every action you do is considered an action of worship. Even if a person is enjoying his relationship with his wife, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala considers uh, this action as an action of worship and rewards uh, for it subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, when, when he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in authentic hadith, wa fi bud'i ahadikum sadaqa. In the relationship with your wife, when you have the sexual uh, intercourse with, you, with your wife, Allah rewards you for it as an action of worship. Somebody said, O Messenger of Allah, we enjoy in our relationship with our wives and Allah rewards us for it. The Prophet said, look, if you do it in haram way, if you fulfill your need in haram way, do you be, uh, 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 you'll be punished for that? So the, the man said, yes, O Messenger of Allah. He said, and it is like that when you do it in halal way. So if you do, if you fulfill your need in halal way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala considers it an action of worship and rewards you for it subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you sleep during the night, uh, you can seek the reward for your sleeping because you are sleeping uh, to take rest and to be able to wake up to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the uh, righteous predecessors used to say, uh, I seek the reward of Allah for my sleeping the way I ask him to reward me when I wake up. So when I wake up to worship and to pray and prostrate and, and give charity and help others and uh, recite the book of Allah, uh, as I ask him to reward me for that, I ask him to reward, to reward me when I sleep. So this is the philosophy of worship in Islam, that everything legitimate and everything good and beneficial and everything Allah legislated and agreed with, you do sincerely for the sake of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for it and consider it, uh, considers it uh, an action of worship. So the first thing Allah is pleased about is uh, to worship Allah alone without partner or associate and not to associate any one uh, with him subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, neither in his lordship uh, uh, divinity nor uh, in his names and attributes subhanahu wa ta'ala and the second po the point the prophet والسلام, mentioned in this hadith from what Allah is, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased about he said which means الاعتصام is from العصمة so الاعتصام uh, is mean to protect yourself by holding on to the robe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to be divided about this uh, robe of Allah. So uh, to protect yourself by holding on to the robe of Allah. That pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so holding on to the robe of Allah. What is the robe of Allah? The robe of Allah is the book of Allah, Al-Quran. The robe of Allah is uh, the worship. So hold on to the implementation of the deen, the deen of Allah. So hold on to the Qur'an that Allah has revealed to you. So as you see, monotheism comes before unity. Unity should be upon monotheism. So in the first point, the Prophet mentioned, والسلام, monotheism is to worship Allah alone. And then he said that we should come together in, worship, in, in, in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together, holding on to the book, to the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has revealed to us uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah mentioned in Surah Ali Imran and hold on uh, hold firm stand firm uh, hold into the robe of Allah subhanahu uh, wa ta'ala uh, which is the Quran and don't be divided because division always cause, uh, cause, causes failure Allah Azza wa Jalla said وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا so if, 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 the, if the Muslims are divided and in dispute with each other, uh, uh, so uh, deviated from the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to them, they will fail and they will never be able to achieve their goal. The only way to achieve your goals in this life and in the hereafter is by holding on to the robe of Allah and by coming together as believers upon monotheism and not to be divided, not to be deviated from the guidance that Allah has revealed to us Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third one, the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wa salam, wa antu nasihu man wallahu allahu amrakum. 
So uh, the Muslims live also, always uh, uh, with the leadership. And Prophet Muhammad was sent as messenger and he introduced himself to people by saying, Inni lakum Rasulun Ameen. Uh, when the Prophet والسلام, introduced himself to, to the community in Mecca by saying, I am the messenger of Allah to all of you. Uh, and those who believed uh, in him وسلم, lived under his leadership. He led this minority in Mecca until he was able to migrate وسلم, to Medina and he became the president of the country, وسلم, the leader of the vast majority of the people. وسلم, and he is uh, the leader of this ummah until the day of judgment. And every leader, every leader comes to lead this ummah after the death of Rasulullah should lead this ummah according to the book of Allah and the sunnah of our Prophet وسلم, according to the guidance of the religion of Islam. And our duty toward our leaders is to be sincere uh, uh, with them, to cooperate with them, to support them, to help them to succeed, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they are leading us to, uh, for the uh, pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to achieve our goals in dunya and akhirah, and they deserve our sincere counseling and our sincere advising. It doesn't mean, uh, it doesn't mean that to be the opposition, to be the anti-government. No, it means to be sincere in your advice, to share with them the best of your experiences and the best of opinions and uh, to, to, to love their success, to, uh, يعني, uh, to achieve the goals of, 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 of this dunya and and, and, and akhirah. And we all knew that uh, the Prophet said, والسلام, support your brother, whether he is right or wrong. So one of the people said, uh, we support him if he is right. How we support him if he's wrong? So the Prophet said والسلام, by stopping him from being wrong. So if, 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 if this uh, is needed to, uh, to speak truth uh, to power and to try to correct your leader if he is uh, became misguided, so it is also part of الأمور, to be a good counsel to uh, those that Allah put uh, يعني, uh, in the leadership uh, position. Uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these three things Allah is pleased about for us. He, he likes to see us doing that. So uh, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, to worship him alone without partners or associate and to hold uh, firm to the robe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to be divided and to be good counsel and sincere uh, counselors to uh, those who are in charge of us, those who are uh, in authority. And the three things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates, he said, Qila wa qal wa kathrata as su'al wa idha'at al mal. So, Qila wa qal, you know, the gossiping, the chit chat, people like to speak about what they don't know. They testify for what they are not sure of. Uh, unfortunately, they narrate what they hear from others without evidence. And we all knew that this is not a Muslim behavior. Uh, we, when Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam sent uh, Al-Walid ibn Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayt to bring the zakah money from one of the tribes and he did not go, he scared it to go for a reason and he came back to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam to say that he went and the, and the tribe refused to give him the zakah. So the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam believed in the, uh, the statement of this a Muslim of this believer and was about to act upon it, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, in jaakum fasiqum binaba'in fatabayyanu. Oh, you who have believed if a wrong door brought news to you, verify it first. Verify it first. If somebody is telling you something about somebody else, don't believe in it until you verify what you heard. Don't believe in everything people are talking about. You need to get uh, your information from authentic sources. And when you hear any statement or any allegation or anything about anybody, you need to make sure and to see the evidence of that and not to believe in it and to not to narrate that as if you are sure of it. Uh, uh, we all knew what happened in the incident of uh, Al-Ifq uh, when uh, يعني, uh, Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul, the head of the hypocrites in Medina, uh, fabricated rumor uh, 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 يعني, uh, about uh, the mother of the believers, 
Aisha radiallahu anha, and people heard what he said, and they started to repeat behind him and to speak about what he is talking about. It became a uh, rumor spread all over the city, shaked the, ho the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and shaked the entire city of Medina, shaked the house of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, the father of Aisha radiallahu anha, uh, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the innocence of Aisha in 10 verses in Surah Al-Nur from above heaven subhanahu wa ta'ala to prove her, her innocence. Uh, so uh, as Muslims, when we read about Hadith uh, Al-Ifkan, when we read in Ja'akum Fasiqum Manabi'im Fatabayyanu, when we read these uh, verses in the Quran, we need to learn the lesson that we don't speak about what we don't know. We don't narrate something we are not sure of. We, do, we don't believe accusation against somebody until we see the evidence of that. We see the evidence of that. Uh, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates to see the Muslims uh, speaking of what he uh, doesn't know. In, in one of the hadith reported in Sayyid Muslim, uh, our Prophet said, alayhi wa sallam, kafa bil mar'i kathiban an yuhaditha uh, bi kulli ma sami'a. Yani it is enough for the person to be considered a liar if he narrates everything he hears. So the one who narrates everything he hears without investigating, so this person is a liar. The Prophet said that, والسلام, in authentic hadith in Sayyid Muslim, uh, all the hadith of Sayyid Muslim are accepted uh, 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 in our deen. So uh, the Prophet said, it is enough to be considered a liar if you narrate and confirm everything you hear without verifying the truthfulness of what you are uh, narrating. So, so the lesson that we need all uh, to, uh, we need to learn all is not to believe in anything without evidence, not to narrate what the people are talking about without proofs. And subhanAllah, uh, if we bring something يعني, uh, going on around us now, a lot of people don't want to take uh, the vaccine uh, of uh, COVID-19. What is the reason? If you ask them why you are not uh, uh, يعني, uh, getting the vaccine, why, why you are not getting uh, vaccinated, he will say because uh, the, this is a conspiracy and the leaders of the world they want to uh, kill a huge amount of people uh, and this uh, vaccination will harm the health of, uh, of people. So I say, subhanAllah, you, you believe that the entire medical doctors of the entire universe and the entire medical institutions are conspiring to kill a human being and they start with themselves. They are the first people getting uh, the vaccination. But because people are talking always about uh, conspiracy theory and uh, fabricating rumors and they make talk shows and they speak in live stream on uh, social media a lot of people millions of people they believe in what they said they don't believe the doctors and they believe uh, people who don't have any uh, idea about about medical science and as muslims we learn to ask ahl dhikr as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the quran fas'alu ahl dhikri in kuntum la ta'lamun ask the people of knowledge if you don't know and the people of knowledge when it comes to medical science are the medical doctors so we should listen to them and follow their instruction and their guidance and not to uh, listen to rumors and uh, yeah, wrong information is spread by uh, non-professionals. And the Prophet also mentioned Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Allah hates kathrat as-su'al, kathrat as-su'al. And kathrat as-su'al, uh, uh, يعني it has uh, different interpretations. Kathrat as-su'al, like for instance, the Prophet one day was uh, telling the Muslims in his speech, إن الله قد فرض عليكم الحج فحج أو فحج الله has commanded you to make Hajj. That means يعني يعني the fifth pillar of Islam. If you are able to do it, he said فحج. That means go and do it. So the Aqr ibn Habis asked the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام, is it every year, O Messenger of Allah? Is it every year? يعني, is it obligation to go to Hajj every single year? So the Prophet said, عليه الصلاة والسلام, لو قلت نعم, وجبت. If I said yes, it will become an obligation every year. It will be like that. 
ولا ما استطعتم ان يو نوت بي ابل تو جو تو حاج جبريل يو نوت بي ابل تو فولفيل سو ذا بروفيت سيد عليه الصلاه والسلام ان ون اوف ذا ناريشنز الحج مره ومن زاد فهو تطوع يعني ذا اوبليجيشن اوف حج تو بي فولفيلد وانس ان يور انتاير لايف تايم اي فيو دو مور اتس فولنتيرلي يو ار فولنتيرينج اند ذن صلى الله عليه وسلم سيد ذروني ما تركتكم يعني دونت اسك مي اباوت ليجيسليشنز انتل اي برينج ات تو يو انتل الله ريفيلز ات فانما اهلك من كان قبلكم كثره مسائلهم واختلافهم على انبيائهم one of the things that destroyed nations before muslims uh, they used to ask a lot and then uh, they يعني uh, they don't apply Uh, 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 the revelation to their actions. Uh, I mean, uh, like uh, the the people of, of the scripture who asked uh, Musa alayhi salam is to choose a day for them is for the for the worship of Allah alone. To choose a day in the week and make it haram for them to work and to be only for the worship. So he offered them the day of al Jumu'ah. And then they started to negotiate with him to make it Saturday. So after the permission of Allah, he made it for them on Saturday. It is haram to work and you must be worshipped and to worship only. So some of them started to work on Saturday and they failed to apply what they asked for. So that's why the Prophet said you should not cause the revelation to come or ask for legislations until it is legislated. And as Muslims in this era after the death of our Prophet, there is no more legislations for us. So uh, one of the kathrat al-su'al that we need to avoid is to ask about what does not concern us. When husni islam al-mar, tarku ma la yani. Yani part of, of, of the perfection of your Islam, uh, if you want to perfect your Islam and to complete your Islam, is to, st- to stay away from what does not concern you. And also, uh, yani you should not ask questions Uh, for instance, to test the teachers. Some people, when you when you are in a, in, in a class or something teaching, they ask also only to test the teacher, or they ask uh, uh, to show off and to have the attention of those who are around. So you should not do that. Allah, Allah hates that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You ask to learn. In the Quran, Allah said, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْأَهِلَّةِ يَسْأَلُونَكَ مَاذَا يُنْفِقُونَ يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْمَحِيدِ Allah is saying in the Quran to his Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi the people are asking you what to spend. The people are asking you about the ruling on menstruation. They are asking you about uh, the crescents. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is telling the Prophet what to say uh, in the answers of these uh, of these questions. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it's okay to ask you to learn. فاسألوا أهل الذكر إن كنتم لا تعلمون. Allah is saying ask the people of knowledge if you don't know, if you don't know, if you need to know. But some people, they come to ask a question and then they start to debate. So that means if you are debating, that means you know. And if you know, why you're asking? If you have an opinion, so why you come to another person to ask him a question, to hear his answer and to start debating him? This is not a good behavior. You ask when you need to know and ask the proper person, the one who is strong in knowledge and sincere and trustworthy that you trust uh, that he will give you the right answer. Also, one of the kathrat uh, is su'al that is hated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that to ask others their stuff, to beg for money, to ask people a lot. To Allah doesn't like that. If you ask, ask Allah alone subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the provider. He is the sustainer. Allah does not like people to ask uh, if they don't need. And some people, subhanAllah, they work like that. Uh, I see people, they come to the Islamic centers and the masajid, Uh, to ask for money while well, they don't need. It's like a profession. So he comes to fabricate a story and ask the Zakat committee to give him help as if he is a needy and he is not a needy and he takes the money. Then he goes to another masjid to fabricate another story and, uh, and, uh, and to get some money. This is kind of stealing. This is kind of stealing. And a person should not ask for financial help or for the Zakat money if he is wealthy and if he, if he has enough. And uh, he should not ask for help if he is healthy and able to work. So if the person is healthy and able to work, he should work. And the per- if the person is uh, uh, wealthy, and wealthy means he has what is enough. He doesn't uh, يعني need to be very rich. It's just he has what he needs. So you should not ask for the help of anyone. Even if you are a needy and you need, 
the first door to knock is the door of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if you are a needy uh, it's okay then to ask until you fulfill your need and not to ask for more and not to ask for more so kathrat is sual is something that Allah hates subhanahu wa ta'ala the final point is uh, he said wa idaatil mal to waste the money uh, so Allah hates people to waste their money because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, made uh, this money is something important in your life you need the money you need money for everything so if you have money Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want you to waste the money uh, and the worst way to waste the money when you spend the money uh, uh, to buy haram things somebody is buying alcohol wasting his money and Allah hates that subhanahu wa ta'ala he's disobeying Allah with his grace he is disobeying Allah with his favors uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala the person is disobeying uh, is uh, يعني, uh, يعني disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but he has what, what he has provided to him by the sustenance that he sustained him with uh, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala so uh, يعني, uh, buying haram things, uh, by, uh, losing the money or wasting the money in gambling or uh, uh, selling alcohol or, or investing drugs or something, this is a waste of money. Uh, this is يعني, uh, the, the highest level of wasting money. And also, one of the ways uh, is to waste your money is to give it to a sufaha. Allah said, لا تؤتوا الصفحاء أموالكم التي جعل الله لكم قيامة. يعني don't give uh, your money to somebody who is ignorant and unexperienced to invest it uh, and to lose it. So this is also one of the ways you lose your money. Also one of the ways you lose your money or you waste your money when, uh, for instance, you buy what you don't need. So some people, he has a good car and he buys second car and third car and fourth car. He doesn't need all these cars, but for show off, just to, to show that he is wealthy, Allah hates that. Uh, a person maybe He's living with his wife only, and he's living in a castle, uh, 15 uh, or 20 bedrooms, and he doesn't need all that. So he's wasting his money in something he doesn't need. If he need a food with a certain amount of money, he may need uh, يعني, uh, 10 double of what he needs, and he will eat little bit, and the rest of the food will be thrown away. So Allah uh, hates wasting money. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَنْفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا وَلَمْ يَخْطُرُوا so Allah is, uh, is showing that he is proud of those who are moderate in their spending. When they spend, they don't waste, and at the same time, they are not cheap. So they, they fulfill the need properly, moderately, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so on and so forth. So uh, three things Allah likes, and three things Allah hates. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes uh, to be worshipped alone, without partner or associate. He likes to see the Muslims together, united, holding on to the robe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to be divided. And he likes the Muslims to be sincere, a good counselors and good advisors uh, to each other and to those who are in charge of them, those who has authority over them. And in the same time, uh, Allah hates the subhanahu wa ta'ala, chit chat and gossiping and backbiting and believing uh, in news without evidence and in narrating everything you hear without verifying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates people who ask a lot for no need and no reason. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala hates uh, those who waste their money in buying haram or uh, investing without experience uh, or uh, يعني, uh, buying what you don't need. So the, all this stuff, Allah hates it. So I conclude with a very important point from this hadith. This hadith is informing us that uh, one of the attributes of Allah that he loves and he, uh, he, he is pleased subhanahu wa ta'ala with the actions of his, uh, some actions of his servant. So it is, it is uh, one of the attributes of Allah that Allah loves and hates subhanahu wa ta'ala. He loves what's good and hates what's bad subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, but when we hear about the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should not compare Allah with his servants. So these attributes, when it comes to the servants of Allah, when it comes to the creation, it is at, as it, it fit uh, the creation. And when we are talking about the attributes of Allah, the attributes of Allah as it fits, uh, as uh, it fit his majesty, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't compare Allah with his creation. We do not compare the attributes of Allah with the attributes of the creation. Allah is unique, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, we believe in what he said about himself. 
we believe uh, uh, in the attributes that Allah mentioned about himself in the Quran. We believe in the attributes that his prophet mentioned uh, in his sunnah and spoke about in his sunnah without thinking how it is. Because the attributes of Allah are beyond our ability to know how the attributes of Allah are. So we believe in it the way it is narrated without thinking how it is, without imagining. Because our brains are limited and we cannot uh, imagine Allah and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He, uh, يعني he, uh, he as he described himself subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit us from what we just heard from this hadith of Rasulullah uh, sallallahu alayhi wa and make this knowledge for us uh, beneficial knowledge. Uh, I said uh, what you heard and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins and to give us the power and the ability to implement this knowledge in our life. Subhanak Allahumma Rabbana wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad walhamdulillah rabbil alameen. May Allah reward you for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.